So can you tell me what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about changing the field mm -hmm. of where we live and how we live, the values, because I feel like a lot of the field is, is pretty negative and toxic right now. It's a bully mentality. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that when the field changes, then everybody changes within the field. The field, I mean, like the energy of a place where you are, um, how people interact, because I could be, you know, compassionate, but I walk into a place that's not, where everybody's interacting in a way that's very toxic and angry and accusatory, and then I end up absorbing that and acting the same mm -hmm. way. So through art, through dance, through writing and film, I um, hope to connect emotionally with people for the desire to, to live another way. Mm -hmm. And how you can change the field through the art? I think various ways. One way is through movement and writing and drawing. You could um, lead a workshop, I could lead a workshop that changes the field. So through those three hours, somebody has a change of field, change of presence. They experience themselves in a different way that's more connected and grounded. So a reference point or through film or theater, you know, you put a performance on and, and by watching that, you absorb it. You watch a film, you absorb that energy and, and it can change your perspective. Um, versus the values of our society are a lot of going to the mall and, and shopping what you can buy, drinking beer, um, getting ahead as fast as you can, having the most likes, um, putting a mask on to be liked. Mm -hmm. How do you invite people to changing the field? I, yeah, through workshops, through expressive arts therapy, a, a program I did out and got certified in California to Malpa Life Art, which was founded by Anna Halperin and her daughter Daria for the past 30 years, um, relating architecture, space, how we live to, to dance and movement and voice. So through voice as well. In society, there's usually just a couple voices that are allowed in that are, are, are the top voices and that's what they expect everybody. If you have a different voice, then you're, you're ostracized or not listened to or dismissed. Um, and so through helping other people find their voice, their, their real voice, not what they think is good that's going to get them further, but like what they really came here to say, their soul wants to say. And then for me, like by writing this film about my family and this project, I hope to shed light on, on how I see the world truly. Mm -hmm. And is there something you would like to share with people for this film? Some, some sentence, some your ideas, some what's put in your heart? I'm not sure yet. I'm still in the process of, of researching and writing it, but there's something about voice and having courage to, to speak your voice and own your truth, even when it's dismissed or, or told that it's not, it's not the truth. Oh. Um, through your body, there lies a lot of intuition. That's why I do so much work through the body. So you can make art and, and use your body to make art in a way that like how we use the environment, it debilitates it or destroys it. Um, like workaholism, working too much, not enough rest. But if you allow your body to be part of your artistic process and part of your life, your intuition and your truth will come out through the body. The body never lies. I was told that once by an acupuncturist. And it's true. The body knows the truth. No matter how much in the head you can get confused or manipulated by people, your body will tell you your truth. 
So I, I hope to work with my body to find my truth and share it with the others. And in my workshops, I work with people to invite them to, to get in touch with their body and then through the expression, through the writing and drawing, find a deeper truth that wants to come out that is yours solely. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you.